Let's do a little preview. It seems every week we are just, you know, picking games, and and I kind of wanted to get into the weeds a little bit for at least a few minutes on some of the other things that are happening around college <coughs> football so that we're not just, you know, we're not just picking games. I did have four questions that I wanted us to go over leading up to college football week four, and my first one to you is what are – the most intriguing games. Like, what games are we going to learn the most about teams this week? You got one right off the bat, or you want me to? You want me to toss one in there? No, man. I mean, I, 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 it's hard. It's hard to answer that question nationwide. True. Because because everybody is looking at something different. You've got you know, 130 teams. I, oh, yeah. I, I immediately think of my LSU Tigers and Mississippi State. We've both seen them play poorly and we've both seen them play well and we don't know who they really are we don't think they're great but are they as bad as we think they are and as bad as they've looked what 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 who who are these teams for real and those i think those are the two teams that have the most to prove i do agree with you i my first one here was tulane and uab both of them have been blown out by bigger teams tulane of course kept it close with oklahoma I'm I'm curious which one of these teams is is a legit, you know, G5 contender, is somebody that can compete in their conference. I don't know that that UAB losing to Tulane is drastic, but I think Tulane using no. or losing to UAB could be a massive massive issue if they're wanting to compete for the AAC. The other one I had UTSA in Memphis. I yep. both of those are 3 and 0. They could absolutely be in the New Year's 6 competition. I'm you know, I'm curious about that one. And then, of course, uh, my, my other one is, you know, Maryland and Kent State. Kent State has played Iowa, Texas A&M, and an FCS school. Do we think that Maryland, I mean, Maryland's got a shot to be 4-0 and in hosting a top-10 Iowa team on a Friday night here in a couple weeks. I'm kind of excited about the, the idea of this. I fully expect Maryland to win, but they hadn't faced an offense like this one yet, uh, not, not by any stretch of the imagination. So... Who knows what may end up coming out of this, but those three kind of caught my attention. Tell me, who do you think has the most to gain this weekend? Oh, I, I think if Clemson can go into North Carolina State, now maybe, see, once again, this is my perception. I do not think Clemson looks very good at all right now, okay? They're, they're winning games, but they're looking bad, and and I think they have an opportunity to play a team that I think is pretty good. And if they can get back to the ways of old and beat somebody up by 15 or 20 points and, and kind of put some points on the board, then then they would change my perspective. I think that would be a big deal for them. There's a lot of the country that just assumes they're still Clemson and what's happened the last two or three weeks and them not being able to score is, is no big deal at all. And, and they're the same team that they've always been. They should be a ranked top five team. I just don't see that. I don't, I don't know what other people are else are looking at or thinking about. Um, so I disagree with that. And, and so that's my perspective. The other team, I think, might be Oklahoma. You know, Oklahoma's one, same, same concept. Literally everything I said about Clemson, say about Oklahoma. Hey, that makes sense. That does make sense. I see where you're coming from with that. I actually had Clemson with the most to lose this weekend. Oh, they definitely get, got just as much, if not the most to lose. Yeah. At mine, mine for most to gain is actually Arkansas. They have lost nine straight to A and M. They could actually jump into the top 10 with a win over A and M this weekend. And they got a good shot to do it. I know that they've got two offensive linemen that it looks like may not play, but Zach Calzada's kind of got happy feet. I, I don't know if he's going to be ready to face off against Barry Odom's defense, which can be very, very multiple. We've seen him, you know, bring three and drop eight. We've seen him run a uh, a three one six or or whatever it was three two six uh, last year multiple times. Like he just puts the best players on the field, and what he runs pre snap is completely different from what he runs post snap. I think Arkansas has got a really really good chance to beat A and M this weekend. If they do that, they make it into the top ten before they go play at Georgia next week. I mean, we could be looking at drastically. Uh, different expectations for Arkansas for the rest of the season. Did yeah, you have... they've got a they've got a gauntlet. They've okay. got an absolute gauntlet. Looking at their schedule ahead, you got that right. You have absolutely got that right. Did you have another one for uh, for most to lose? 
for most to lose, man, I kind of, I kind of don't off the top of my head. Other than it's a we, it's a team that's just bad, right? So, so Florida State's a terrible football team right now. Florida State doesn't have a win. It's it's hard to say. Maybe I should flip flop Clemson and Florida State. Florida State might have the most to win if they could get a W. I think that's a team that needs a win more than anybody else in the country. They're playing a team they can beat. Yeah. But, you know, they're coming off a, a, a good win from last week in Louisville. And I just think if they lose this game and they start the season off, you know, with a zero in the win column this far out, that might be it. That might be done. That's why I think they might have the most to lose is because this might be a bottom-of-the-barrel situation. Yeah. No, I, I think Florida State is bad. Like, really bad. Especially, I think they're missing, like, two or three offensive linemen, and the backups are just not very good. And so this is a, a big, big problem with that team. I'm I'm real curious. Yeah. My my next one, I had a, a playoff sleepers, I guess you could say. I. I don't know exactly how to go with this, and I don't know that we necessarily have to do this every week, but this was just a thought. Baylor has looked absolutely friggin' outstanding so far this season. Yeah. Now, they, their their competition has yeah. been suspect, right? Who do they have this week? They've got a good game this week, too. They are playing Iowa State this week. They are seven-point underdogs yeah. at home. So I thought that was a lot of points when I was looking at it this weekend. I just thought, man, I, I, you know, I know on paper before the season started, that's probably the right spread. We we've seen three weeks of football from these two teams. I don't know that they're a, foot, a touchdown apart. I I kind of feel the same way. Again, Baylor has played basically nobody, but I kind of I kind of feel the same way you do. I mean, bringing in the offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes from BYU and what he has yep. been able to do with re- hell, hell of a job. Yeah, with with reworking that offensive line. I mean, it, it's the same dudes that looked awful last year and they have just been bruisers this year. So I'm I'm curious, another year under Dave Aranda, that defense appears to be significantly better. Jerry Bohannon, the quarterback, they are making massive strides. I think if if Baylor can get by Iowa State and continue to look the way that they have thus far this season, this could be a team that we need to be paying attention to in the Big Twelve going forward. because uh, again, Oklahoma has not been, you know, exactly world feeders. Well I think I think I think the Big Twelve is a free for all right now. Yes. I, I think I think Iowa State hadn't lost anything because they still haven't lost the conference game, and they've only lost to Iowa, who is a hell of a football team. I think a top five team in the country, not getting the credit they deserve. And the other team in that conference, I think, is is Texas Tech. And then once again, Texas made a change at quarterback. I'm curious to see those two teams. Not, uh, not Texas Tech. TCU is the other team. I think it's special. Texas made a change at quarterback. They got Texas Tech this weekend. I'm curious to see. If that offense looks a lot more explosive, a little more dangerous, a lot more firepower under them, play with a little more swagger, can they hop up and compete for the Big 12? Hey, you know Texas Tech's numbers right now look absolute, and it's another one of those situations like Baylor. Uh, but Texas Tech's numbers are unreal. Just just ridiculous. They, so, got, they finally found them a quarterback. I'm getting another call. <laughs> I had to decline the call. Yes, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.